you have all these average looking people and then you have this this pixie and people are like what is this and they go through your stuff and then they dig deeper mm-hmm. and then yeah. they're always like wow i thought your music was gonna be horrible but it's actually good right we strive to motivate inspire young minds so they don't go to waste we call ourselves city but we global and everybody that has a voice is allowed to be vocal Changing the Youth, the hottest podcast in the city, hosted by myself, Jerry Novato, and Kelsey Means, Deluxe Vlog, Frank Adelic, I Work Magic Daily, Palm Beach Connect, Surely Sabri. We got in the building. Sasha Bang. Sasha Bang, finally here. Uh, thank you for being here. I appreciate you being um, a guest on our podcast. How are you no feeling? Problem. How you been? I've been amazing, and I'm feeling amazing <laughs> all right great answer okay so sasha bang i don't even know where, where do we start are you from palm beach i'm from palm beach like west palm lake worth lake worth area mm-hmm. okay how long have you been there well i like moved around my whole life so i never really like stayed in lake worth too long i stayed there till i was about like 12 13 then mm-hmm. i moved to jupiter and then i moved to Boynton beach and okay then, all around florida yeah okay all around south florida though. yeah like i always stayed in the west palm area gotcha gotcha okay that's cool that's cool but you never really went like out of state and lived anywhere else like as far as like just living there no my parents have a house in North Carolina, but um, I don't, like, ever want to go and stay with them, so I I never go there. Yeah. I mean, I like North Carolina. Just I just don't like your parents that much. I didn't you say all that. Uh, okay. So why, why not Why not go over there and, and stay with No, you were right them? about what you said. Oh, oh, no. No. No, you're not supposed to agree with that. <laughs> uh, you made me. Okay. No, I did not. No, choice. no, I did not. No, I did not. <laughs> you you said a statement that contradi- that that brought up the opportunity to possibly you don't have contradict to yourself. Uh, anyways, it's next question. Out. Next question. <laughs> You should love your parents. If any anybody watching this, I love them. I don't want to hang out with them. They're like old people. Okay, but you're cool. you're cool. So you must have gotten some coolness from them. Yeah, my dad. Okay. My dad's cool. All right. Shade, baby. Yeah. Wow. Mama's hurt. But okay. So no, no North Car North North Carolina. You said right. Yeah. Okay. So no North Carolina for you. Do you, have you enjoyed being like like staying in Palm Beach and like being here what do you enjoy about being here because i feel like someone like you you wouldn't necessarily stay somewhere you don't like oh yeah i'm never leaving florida um florida's just better than everywhere in the world I've, like i've actually traveled and i was like wow florida's actually way better than here <laughs> and then when i come back i'm like oh my god thank yeah you god <laughs> for the warmth from for the warmth and the, and the you know sometimes good weather uh but it's interesting because everyone else, like you said, like I, when I go uh, the couple other places I've been, everyone else want to be here, like in Florida, like people travel to Florida for vacation. But Floridians don't really like Florida. That's like, well, they're lame. And they, you know, when okay. I used to live in Lake Worth, I didn't like Florida either. And mm-hmm. guess what? I got out of Lake Worth, saw that other places are actually not broke and ugly. And I was like, wow, Florida's actually nice as hell. I was just in a shit area. It was just Lake Worth. Yeah. Shout out Lake Worth. That's a good, that's a great way to represent uh, Lake Worth right there. But yeah, I, I can understand. I mean, what? If you're in a bad area, you're not going to like it no matter where you are. If you're in a good area, no matter where you are, you're that, probably going to be more happy. That's facts. Is most is most of Lake Worth bad? Or is, are there some good parts to Lake Worth? No. <laughs> what was enjoyable to do in Lake Worth growing up? They have a beach. They have water. Yeah, they have nice. a beach, and they have like a little park, Bryant Park, and they like throw little festivals there sometimes, like for Gay Pride and shit. Oh. That's fun. Okay. Do you partake? Uh, not anymore. I don't go to that no more. But um, I did go to like a protest one time at Bryant Park for like BLM, but that's like the only thing I've been to Lake Worth for like since mm. I lived there. There's no, never nothing going on there. Yeah. Okay. What 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 did you uh did you did, what did you do for, for the uh, at that protest? For the for the BLM protest. Oh, I, I were was you just standing there. there were you kind of like were I you was just standing there and like holding a sign and then like 
there was a bunch of people. Like, it wasn't even really a protest. It was just a bunch of people. It was, like, a, ga- it was a gather. Yeah. A gathering. And there was just a bunch of cops there just, like, looking all angry. But the protesters weren't giving them any reason to, like, actually do anything. They were just, like, had a microphone and were, like, saying their yeah. struggles in life and stuff. And, like, just, like, telling about different things in their life that they've experienced and stuff like that. But it wasn't a real, like... No one was actually like fuck yeah. cops or anything. It wasn't a riot or yeah. No, like everyone was just like chill and like just like speaking on the issues. Yeah. Okay, so g- grew up in Lake Worth and where where did you like spend most of your time though? Like what was like what was it for you? Always like Boca and Boynton Boca and stuff. Okay. Yeah, that's where I like started doing music is like uh Boynton and then I like first studio I ever went to was Palm Beach Records. Mm. And then um, from there, I went to A Flux Studios. Gotcha. Because I wanted like the. It's quality. like in Wellington. Was it in Wellington at the time? Yeah, so you I was had to in drive. Wellington. Yeah. Um, I wanted like the quality to be there in my vocals, and at the time, Palm Beach Records they didn't even have like a compressor or nothing. So I ended up going to A Flux because they had all the equipment that I needed, and then A Flux ended up closing. So then I ended up getting Paul, the person who built that studio in A Flux, to help right. me build my studio on Delray Ave. So you ended up building your personal studio, and were you learning how to be a producer, engineer, and all the all the, all the work that comes with it, or were you just hiring people to do that? Um. Like, I wanted to at the beginning. I know enough to be able to do it. I'm not good at it, but I know how to do it. Um, That's all I wanted was to, like, know how to do it and stuff. But uh, I'm a singer and a songwriter, and that's what I need to be focusing on and giving my full time to. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to do something that you literally need to go to school for a year to learn how to do, it's, like, kind of a waste of my time right now when I'm trying to do singing and songwriting. So I just need to focus on what I'm doing. So I hire people. Okay. Well, a little bit of a waste of time, but also saves a lot of money. Uh, you can't be thinking about saving money. When oh, yeah, I want to know what, like, trying to, what your mindset was with that. Yeah, you can't be thinking about trying to save money when you're trying to become a superstar. Mm-hmm. And that's the, that's the goal for you uh, is to not only just be a singer that is known and is making, you know, good money and is decently popular you want to actually be i want a career for the rest great. of my life and i want to be a ghostwriter and a songwriter for other artists nice all while being a superstar i yeah i've already um written songs for uh, other artists before i've written songs for pop artists for metal artists for mm-hmm. rappers okay well along your journey and we talked about, you know, you moving out of Lake Worth and you, you, you know, from from now make, uh, making music with Aflux and all that. Prior to that, when did you discover that you have the talents that you do as far as songwriting and, and your vo- your vocals? How did you even come across that? Like, was it just always a passion for you? Yeah, it was always a passion for me ever since I was a little kid. My favorite actress was actress was Julie Andrews. I was always obsessed with Elton John, Lady mm. Gaga when she came out. Um, I've always like wanted to do the stuff that I'm doing right now. I always like went to classes and with thinking later in my life I'm going to use this. Like I would always do singing classes, acting classes. I would yeah. always like even got my cosmetologist license, not because I wanted to do hair, but because I wanted to know what in, what if one day I'm going to have to do my own makeup, and my own wig or my own hair and I'm going to have to know how to do that stuff. So. You were strategic and you knew about that from from a young age. Yeah, I knew what I wanted to do since I was a little kid. OK, who first exposed you to to these people, the Lady Gaga's, the Elton John's and stuff like that? Um, my dad has, like, really good taste in music, like, old music, so, and he, like, is not, you know, a sexist guy or anything, like, he would always show me Madonna and stuff like that, like, he's not, like, a male chauvinistic at all, he's always, gotcha. like, listen to whatever, like, he doesn't care if it's good music, it's good okay, music. Okay, so he not only was showing it to you, he, he actually listened to these, to, um, yeah. That was his choice of music as well. Yeah, and he okay. like showed me the Beatles, like Led Zeppelin. Gotcha. Everything is cool. Cool. See, I, I knew your dad was a cool guy. So, 
that's pretty dope. So you were exposed to like a variety of music at a young age. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what was your first record? What was the first like song you went out and, and wrote and, and, and performed? The first song that I ever wrote, um, I like wrote, was, was writing songs since I was a little kid. So I used to have like a little tape recorder and I would write songs and then I would record it on my little tape recorder. Mm -hmm. So I don't even have those anymore. But like the first song that I wrote that was like in like a little closet studio, you know what I mean? Like yeah. with my little friends and stuff like that. It was called, I think, um, I really can't even remember. It, it, bring it back or no, that was, I don't know. I really can't remember. It's so old, yeah. so long ago. But I know that first song that I ever like made. How, right? how old were you? I was like fifteen. Okay. And then my first song that I ever like actually like made, like actually came out with, was "Bring It Back." And mm. then the first song I ever performed, because I didn't perform, I was a recording artist for a really long time, and I didn't perform. Yeah. And he even had like some labels that were interested in me, but then they weren't anymore because they were like, "You need to perform. You've never performed. That is." dangerous for us you need to go perform yeah. so i ended up um like performing for like some labels um the first song i performed was get wild mm -hmm. and then um after that i ended up getting performances and stuff like that after i got a manager and then now i perform all the time so it's like not okay. a big deal i was never afraid of performing or anything yeah. i've always been super confident and never a scared person to talk or perform in front of anyone it's just I didn't have, like, the experience of how to, like, move and interact with a crowd and, like, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. How do how do these labels even know? How did they know you weren't performing? Or you had you did you tell them that? Like, my first time ever performing was for them. Okay. So, like, yeah. But it was, like, my first time on a stage. So I consider okay. that my first time. And was that a – did you have a poor performance? Why they – why no. they thought that or you told them ahead of time like no, i've never done knew. this before yeah they told them it was my first time they were mm. like we know it's your first time we can tell and they were mm. like yeah you have a great voice you know we're actually interested in you but you need to go do the work on your own like we're not going to baby walk you through this stuff you gotta go perform go get it girl come back to us when you got your shit together okay were they were they offering a good deal no, no one offered me a deal. They just okay. told me what I have to do to, oh, to like, get you. to my next step. To they like, didn't even give you a deal, yeah. Yeah, like they were just interested in me. They were like, here, I'll follow you on Instagram. They still follow me and shit. They're like, okay, here, my information. Go perform. Go do it. Get more famous. Come back. Okay. They're like, you have the talent, but you're not, you don't have the experience. Mm. All right. Well, when you're working with labels, are they expecting you to you say get more famous are they expecting you to have a certain audience did they bring that up like you do everything yourself they're like a bank mm -hmm. you, you you can't go to a bank and go get a um you know a loan for your music so that's why you need a label it's not like uh they're gonna not ever do anything for you for your career you got to do everything mm -hmm. yourself so you know the britney spears whole thing of oh the label is gonna control me the label is gonna do this and that for me no, they ain't. They yeah. don't care about you. They only care about your fans and the money that you can make them. They are a bank. They don't care about you at all. So that's what you have to get. Like, you got to know that you got to do everything yourself. And if you're going to sign a deal, you just got to sign it and already have know what you're going to do with the money. Know how you're going to pay it back. Yeah. Yeah, they expect you to have either you to have that maturity or you have a management or some, your team has to be prepared for those. Uh, yeah. You have to build your own team before you even things. get signed too. They don't give exactly. you a team right. unless you're like super special, but you have to do everything yourself nowadays. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was just thankful that they told me, Hey, um, you're actually great, but you know, go perform, go give me, give me some guidance. I was thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when, well, you use that to now, now you've, you're putting all the pieces together or you already have them together. You mentioned you have a manager, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Everything in life is an experience that you are going through. You are choosing to put a label on that experience. If it is a good experience or a bad experience, mm -hmm. if you're feeling negative emotions, you're choosing to feel those negative emotions. If you're feeling positive emotions. You're choosing to feel those positive emotions. You're in control of everything in your life. We strive to motivate inspire young minds so they don't go to waste. We call ourselves city, but we global. 
and everybody that has a voice is allowed to be vocal. So as far as your, your image as a singer, um, you've embodied like the pixie fairy kind of look. Where did that, where did that start? Um, I was like always thinking about like, I always like was trying to do like a whole fairy thing, but I never really like knew how to do it. And like over the, over the years I was like, all right, what color hair is going to make me look most like a fairy? What can I do? What type of clothes? And I eventually literally invented this style called like fairy grunge core. Mm -hmm. Um, like you can look, I'm like the first person under the hashtag. I invented that stuff, but it ended up getting like super famous and growing way beyond me. But um, I was the first person to ever do that stuff. I pr basically um, was just like go like literally studying every day, like like looking up like okay, what type of clothes? What type of like hair? What type of like aesthetic? What colors together? What mm -hmm. tattoos? How can I do this to like embody this when I'm just ch chilling in a studio? Right, like right. how can I become this person? Type of thing. And then um, now, like, a bunch of people are doing it, like, fairy core. It's actually, like, a style, which I think is super cool because, I mean, like, no one knows that I started it. But, um, you know, all the blogs and stuff, when I – they posted me, like, long ago. I've been mm -hmm. doing it since, like, 2017. Right, right. So, like, uh, my pictures are all out there and stuff. So, it's, like, uh, sometimes I see girls with my – tattoo drawn on their face mm -hmm. dark green super long hair and the exact same makeup as me and i'm like wow they saw a picture from me a year ago that's pretty cool like i'm yeah. not a hater like uh they like even if they don't know that i'm the one who invented it i still think it's cool like i'm just like cool i invented something yeah you still you're still proud of of uh, you know being that influence yeah but you know to a degree do you do you ever i mean you don't really care for some sort of credit with it when it comes to that stuff, like the recognition of like, you know, this originated here and, and, and by this person. I don't need to prove anything because the proof is out there. You can look under the hashtag. I was the first person, like human being on the hashtag. The hashtag was all like literally just Minecraft stuff and like mm. mushrooms. I was the first ever person on the hashtag. So it's like, I don't gotta prove nothing. I don't gotta mm -hmm. prove nothing. Like I put my phone on silent. Yeah, just just yeah, either it's that or, literally or take on the Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. Oh, that credit's already there. You, if you want to give me credit, you can go look it up for yourself and see that I invented it. I don't need to go and being like, uh, uh, give me credit, <laughs> and like cry. Like no, it's like if you want to give me credit, that's cool. If you don't, that's cool. I don't really care. I'm not desperate for that. You could never be me. You want to try to be me? You could never be me. No matter what you do in your whole life, you could never be me. So I don't care. It's like I'm secure in who I am. That's a great answer. Also, everyone's gonna quit this shit in a year, and I'm still gonna be me. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's like a trend, so I'm not worried about it. I didn't expect you to be that humble about it. Like, is that is that your honest answer for it, or? Yeah. Okay. I got I got doxed when I got my face tattoo. You got what? I got doxed. Okay. Because. People so oh, wait, that's an act that's actually permanent right there. Yeah, that's how I wanted to ask when she wow. said she got her face tattoo. You know, I've always seen you with it. I'm, I'm thinking it's like you, like it's makeup for real. That's really funny. Everyone when it was makeup really thought it was a tattoo, and then when it's a tattoo, everyone thinks it's makeup. Okay, it was just makeup at some point, and then you made it a tattoo. Yeah, and when I got okay. it tattooed, I got dogs because everyone was like, "You said you invented that. You didn't invent the line on your face." And I was like, "Y'all, it's literally in Naruto." At what point did yeah. I say I invented this? <laughs> yeah, you down. just you just the first, you know. All right. Like I've literally met other people with it, like. Before you started doing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I met men who have it mostly. Like I've never met another girl with it, but I've met like two guys with the same tat as me. Yeah. Based yeah, that's not a that's not an entirely new thing. Yeah, um, no. I think it's kind of tribal. What was the first uh, project you put out? The first project I put out was the one that's still out, the Gifts album, mm -hmm. or little EP. It's an EP. I yeah. don't have no albums out. Both of them are EPs. And now you got the Sinful Pixie. So I feel like you've accepted, like, um, 
like are you would you would you describe yourself more as an like as 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 good or more as bad as like you know as far as like the image go are you do you pre, do you show a, a good image or a bad image i'm in, i'm in between i'm gray mm-hmm. i'm the gray area in between how do you, how does how does this gray area work I don't know. You have to decide for yourself. Humans are the ones that put good and bad labels on things. But I mean, good and bad is kind of like energy. Like it's kind of it's it's kind of felt. It's taken how it's taken. Well, how do you how, how do you describe good and bad? Or do you you don't see good and you don't see bad? I everything in life is an experience that you are going through. You are choosing to put a label on that experience if it is a good experience or a bad experience. Mm-hmm. If you're feeling negative emotions, you're choosing to feel those negative emotions. If you're feeling positive emotions, you're choosing to feel those positive emotions. You're in control of everything in your life. Okay. So say say somebody come over here. You walking down the street. Somebody come up, come up to you and they, they, they smack you in the face. Is is your is your instant emotion when that happens a choice or you choose to either call the cops or beat the shit out of them? That's that's the reaction. So what are you asking me? I'm I feel like that's the reaction. Like if somebody slap you, choosing to hit them back is like a like that's a choice. But how you feel when you get when you got smack is that a choice or is it like because yeah, you're going to feel no, some type of way you don't choose your feelings is what i'm saying like mm-hmm. it's just that like you you can choose your feelings you can choose to feel happy or sad or whatever you want but if someone smacks me i don't know why they smacked me they could have smacked me because i look like a person that beat the shit out of their brother you know and then mm-hmm. would they have done something so bad would i feel bad afterwards no I wouldn't. I'd be like, oh, damn, you thought I was someone else. I got you. You know, like, there's always something behind the story. Like, nothing is ever good or bad. It's always, like, you know, in the middle somewhere. Got you. Okay, well, in your music, how do you feel like um, you present yourself to people as far as... um, you know, I, I feel like people when they they have what's the most common first impression like that people have of you? Um, I don't really know. I like have no concept of self. Like to be honest, <laughs> like uh, every conversation I have with someone, I'm mm-hmm. like, they'll never remember this. Yeah, I'm like I can say whatever I want. They'll never remember this. They'll never think about me again. And you believe that, like, or you just believe that in the moment, or is I that just, just believe that? And mm-hmm. I'm just like, I don't know why. I but just <laughs> you, you leave, you leave memorable impressions. I know that's why. So, it's so it toxic. should be. <laughs> so you should know that people are gonna, people are gonna absolutely remember. Like your, you know, your hair color is different. Everything about you is is different. So I literally just do whatever I want all the time. Yeah. Um, I don't think about what I say very much before I say it. Um, yeah, I'm pretty reckless. Okay. I think your people just touched down. Seems like more than one, more than two. All right, let's talk about the, the Sinful uh, Pixie project that you actually have out. Oh, where it's an EP. Yeah, it's an EP. Um, how, did, how, did, how did that come about? Like, what made you put that, that EP out? I wasn't even really gonna put it out. I was like, oh, I'm not sure if it's good enough. But then I was like, uh, like I already did it, yeah. so I might as well. Like someone might like it. There wasn't no intent with it. It was kind of like a random. Um, I do everything really random. Like, yeah. When I released my music video, I was just like, ah, I have it. I'm just gonna put it out. Yeah. I was like gonna be like, oh yeah, I'll release it on Friday. And I was like, be honest. Who's really waiting for this? Nobody. You promote it when it's already out. Put it out. Yeah. So then I just put it out. <laughs> yeah, that, that's still a good awareness to have as an independent artist because you're right. Like some artists, they watch how bigger artists operate and, and bigger artists with different type of fan bases that can do stuff like that. Like, you know, announce a, a release date and, and people kind of move off of those 
you know, those patterns. But as an independent artist, depending on your fan base, no one's really looking for you. Yeah, you got to, like, put... As I was saying, the music industry is, like, a lot of stuff people put out isn't even good. But if it's shoved in your face enough times, you're going to get it mm -hmm. stuck in your head and you're going to start liking it. Yeah. So it's, like, sometimes you just got to put it out and keep trying to show yeah. people it as much as you can. Yeah. So you just kind of... Mar you're marketing, but backwards. Yeah. Because you can, you can do that... You can do that beforehand. I think it's effective as well. You can show people, like, play a song over and over, maybe get a TikTok going, whatever it may be, and then release that record at a, at a later date. Do you do that? Yeah, but, like, for me, I think, like, you should just put it out because it's, like, no one's out here waiting for you. You're not, like, Billie mm. Eilish out here. Just put it out and then yeah. see if people like it first before you start trying to promote it and stuff. You're trying to promote something. You don't even have a product yet. It's not even out. Yeah. So it's like when you're new, you're losing people at that point because you think they're going to remember you in three days? Heck no, they're not going to remember you. So you got to start promoting when that's already out. How would you describe your fan base? Like, do you, do, are they very like, like looking, looking for your music? Like as far as like your personal fan base go, do you have like, are there, is there an emotional attachment to your music from your fan base? For me, I feel like my fan base is made up of baddies e-girls and men for some reason i think i think i think the man part is is for you know the music is not for you guys <laughs> i don't think they i don't think they look at you for the music i mean they probably do you make great music but that's like the the image is the first impression and that's this i think that's special about you as an artist is like you kind of like decorated where it's like you have all these average looking people and then you have this this pixie and people are like, what is this? And then they go through your stuff and then they dig deeper. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. they're always like, wow, I thought your music was going to be horrible, but it's actually good. Right. And I'm like, wow, thanks. Yeah. You thought I was going to be horrible? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like I feel like um, you have you have um, you have like an explosive personality like that, like. In a way, it may be not like in the same way, but you speak your mind and you kind of say things that can cause a reaction. Yeah. Um, my whole life, I've kind of been like, uh, what is the word? They, uh, Don't use the B word. Like, yeah, I feel like you want to use the B word here. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. I'm not. All right, go ahead. Go I've ahead. been like very uh, uh, like you've people, been good. You've been good. You've been like people don't know if they like me or if they don't like me. Like, but they all pay attention to me. I don't know what mm -hmm. that's called, but um, there's like a word for it. Is like people have very strong emotions about me, but they don't know if it's like a like or a dislike. Yeah, but it's always been like that. I've been given a lot of attention, and but just they people are like one way or the other about me. Yeah, and I don't even do anything like. In high school, I didn't talk to nobody. They were putting me in the yearbook and all. That's like, I mean, that's that's some ten, that's a tendency. That's an attribute of, of someone who's going to be a, a star. I really sat alone way. at lunch every day. Like, really. Like, I'm not one of those people who are like, yeah, like, no, I t didn't talk to anyone in high school. Like, trying to be all sassy about it. Like, no, I, on God, sat alone at yeah. lunch every day. By choice or because you didn't, like, have, like, a lot of friends like that? No, I didn't have a lot of friends like mm -hmm. that. I only had one friend. Her name was Christina, and she made anime and stuff. And mm -hmm. I actually still give her business, like, cover arts and stuff like okay. that. But yeah, I'm were you were you still dressed like like were you still like this in high school? Yeah, that's why I, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people like either hated me or liked me because they were like, um, "Are you wearing like extensions and like wigs? That's yeah. really weird. Why are you making your hair pink? That's like really ugly and weird. Like mm -hmm. you know stuff like that." What's the reaction you get now when people look at you? Oh, now all the people from my high school are all like coming back and kissing my ass, and I'm like, okay, haha. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's good for you because now, were you, were you making the music in high school? Did people know you for music at all? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's when I first released Gifts. Okay. Is when I was in senior year or I like I was like getting out of senior year mm -hmm. and I'd released my first song during senior year and then it like, I just like let it fall off, you know, of Apple Music and everything because it was like 
not good. Mm -hmm. And then um, I released, like, the Gifts album. That's when I got into a real studio. I got into A-Flux, and then I put out Gifts. And then everyone um, kind of was just, like, hating. And people still hate. Like, I seen someone, like, po someone told me um, he's my neighbor is actually someone I went to high school with who was actually nice. His name is Amin. And um, he actually told me, like, oh, yeah, I saw some girl made a, a Snapchat about you going, like, and the yearbook being like, imagine if you went to high school with this girl and then shows yeah. my music video. I'm like, damn, should have made a free promotion. Yeah. Should have made a TikTok. Uh, yeah. could could have got some clout off that one. Yeah. yeah, that's how you gotta look at it. Free promotion, man. I mean, your haters are gonna be. It starts. It starts there. Like they will promote you the best and the like, hardest for sure. I was like, bro, please give me her number. I want to ask her to make a TikTok out of it. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I'll pay her. You mentioned. Um, you mentioned the, I think you call it the Kodak Black effect. Okay, yeah. Is that like, is that like a like a descript? Is that part sort of like an example of that? Uh, or is is no. that description a little deeper than that? No, that description is deeper. Define define the Kodak effect. Okay, the Kodak effect is if anybody just like sees you around him, or like sees that you've been with him, or that you met him, or anything like that, they think you have some type of link to him. They all just start acting really weird and jealous. Yeah. And like we just weird. Yeah, they they start acting like uh they act like you're famous now. Yeah. When it's like, bro, I'm not even fit like calm down. I'm not I'm not Kodak. <sighs> do you think what's your perspective on Kodak? Do you think like his do you think he's the goat of Florida or yeah, is there someone course. else you think is the goat? No. He's the, obviously the goat. <laughs> it's obvious goat. Yeah. All right. Who who would you like to like collab with as far as like your peers and 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 the on like who would, would who would you collab with singing and who would you collab with rapping? Mm, with singing, Post Malone for sure. Post Malone because nice. I feel like I'm girl Post Malone right now. <laughs> and um, as for rapping, I would say um, Dej Rose Gold. Dej Rose Gold. Okay, Post Malone and Dej Rose Gold. Okay. How do you like Dej Rose Gold's rap? I mean, we kind of, like, talked about her, but, like, what makes you, like, so impressed with, because she hasn't, she doesn't have, like, a large disc discography yet, but she has enough that she's made an impression on you. She has Why soul. is that? She has soul, and um, I like her voice and she can rap and I like how she's like sassy like she has the same type of attitude as I do which I like like I like people that are like sassy yeah and that are like love to like diss men no offense <laughs> so like like that's why nice. I love her because <laughs> I'm like we could make a sassy song yeah that's uh <laughs> so you like her because of her honesty do you think she, she's honest in her songs or is it yeah. is it more so like it's a little bit honest and then a little bit not but you know like yeah. everyone is doing it's, it's that. entertainment yeah this is entertainment business you mm -hmm. have to be, do a little extra so so why do you why do you have to go at men in, in the music like what what have we done to you like we just be chilling not going at them <laughs> just roasting them you, you get your roast against us we get our roast against you <laughs> Okay. Okay. You guys have enough. We give us one thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Who's an artist that be roasting women? Like every single. Every one. single. Yeah. Like, what <laughs> I, do you mean? I was trying to catch it. Every, well, I feel like everyone's like you a thought, you a hoe. <laughs> but when women, a lot of women, when they make music, they call themselves that. You know, yeah. they refer to themselves as such, whether for entertainment reasons. To well, take it back, to say, yeah, I'm that, and guess what? It's cool, and I can do whatever I want. For sure. For sure. All right, what's what's the number one song you got dissing, man? If we were um, to just go back and try to look for oh, one. Oh, no, it's not out yet. Okay, um, so you were, this is the that first. That was my trash I left out by the door. I guess if you like your men poor, I gotta get it now, I always want more. Get what you deserve. I'm gonna get mine in a little bit more. What's that song gonna be called? Um, to, uh, hmm. Trash. 
I don't know. I think I think that was the Miss Me song, or it was a skip to my Lou song. I can't really remember. I, I just okay. wrote all these songs last week. You just week. have a lot of songs dissing men you can't really remember. Oh, off the yeah, time. there's so <laughs> many. <laughs> all right, all right, well. Oh, yeah, there's also another one where I'm like, got my kind of nervous texting love letter. <laughs> Because you can't love these men. You enjoy this. Oh, I love You enjoy those records. <laughs> I like can see, like, <laughs> as soon as I asked that, you, you, you glowed. You was like, yes, I can expose it. Yes. <laughs> it's my time. There's yeah. Thing to do, there's an audience for that. There's a... There's a, a what do y'all look, look for in her as far as her being an artist? What do y'all look for? What do I look for in her as far as being an artist goes? I'm just going to... On uh, a male perspective. On a male perspective. I mean... For myself, if I'm if I'm seeing if I'm seeing you, I'm, I'm gonna act like I haven't heard your music because I know right now that you're great. But yeah. if I'm 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 thinking I'm not even gonna say her name, but I'm thinking that you're gonna have some music that are that is um, how would I describe it? Like TikTok type. Yeah, like TikTok type maybe, but like unconventional. And well, I don't even know. If like just like a yeah. different, like way different left. Maybe not even, maybe not even like R and B, but maybe even on like the punk side. Just you know what I mean. Um, I'd, I'd expect something different, and I think when I hear you, the um, in context, it's different. But singing wise, I mean, it's it's not it's nothing crazy. Like you're a great singer, but it's not like far left, you know. Yeah, people don't expect that. People always think I'm gonna be like. Um, like really weird or something. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm actually good. Yeah. Like I, I'm thinking I'm gonna hear something cringe. Yeah. Um, I have a couple TikTok songs, like songs that will be good on TikTok, and I feel like um all my songs would be good on TikTok because yeah. like they're all there's always something sassy in every single one of my songs that you can make a TikTok out of. Yeah. But like except for like my one sad song, which I didn't even play for you because I don't even like sad you have music. Have a sad song. I did it. You probably for my turn fans. into like a dark. Like, are you gonna go back a gothic for that one? No. Okay. Um, I did it for my fans because like they're always like, I want you to do something slow. Can you do something slow? And like they love that song, Down Trenches. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. When I was sad, I wrote this. And I guess I'll put it on for you guys. <laughs> and I like when I was recording it, I was like, oh, please be done. Please be done. Yeah. I'm too happy for this right now. <laughs> Shoot, you really don't like sad songs. I don't, I don't listen much. to any sad songs, yeah. like at all. I don't, I don't, I don't listen to the sad songs. Okay. Even if I'm yeah. like sad, actually, I listen to metal when I'm sad. I won't even listen to a sad song. I'm Just, like, don't be a pussy, and cry. Yeah, you listen to something more song. aggressive. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. All right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. My thing, like with you too, um, is. As far as like the music goes, I feel like your personality mixed with the music you make, it's like you're gonna inevitably like blow up. Like honestly, like I mean, cause like you said, like almost every song you make can be a TikTok. And it's because like, I feel like you are like genuinely the artist that is presented to the, to the listener it's relatable. And I think that's what makes like the big artists big is like like the Drakes and like even even Tory Lanez as an independent artist is very relatable. Um Rod Wave is one of them. Um and I think like you are truly the artist that you are in your in your in your music to the point where you're going to always have like I like good records. Stuff for everybody. Like I'm not like totally like for like girls or guys like when I'm writing songs, I'm thinking like, okay, a guy that listens to girl artists mm -hmm. would like this. A girl who's doing her makeup would like this. A dude at the club would like this. Because I'm talking about like sometimes like sexy things that a guy would want a g girl to say to them. Right, right. You know what I mean? Or like things that a guy would want to hear a girl say or like would want... You know, yeah. I don't know. So I try to like think when I'm writing songs because I'm a songwriter, I'm making a song for everybody. I'm not making the song just for me. Yeah. Like my sad songs are like something I write just for me when I'm in that headspace and stuff like that. But usually I'm like in the vibe, hear the beat, write the song right there, get in the booth. Like it's like a whole experience of like trying to be lit, trying to have a good time mm -hmm. and trying to put that 
vibe into the song and then it's like whatever I'm going through at the time put that into the song of like what I feel but I'm making the song for everybody because I want everyone to be able to connect to the song and get something out of it mm-hmm. you have uh I know you you mentioned Lady Gaga a couple of times is she an influence a big influence Lady Gaga is one of my biggest influences and Elton John too mm-hmm. um because when I was young, I was really bullied because of, like, my what everyone loves me for now is when I was a kid what I was bullied for, which is my uniqueness, my artistic side. Because I was always dressing, like, weird and doing weird things, saying weird things and doing artistic things my whole life. So when I saw Elton John and I saw people like Lady Gaga and they were so weird and so themselves and they didn't care, they were loud and proud and will do whatever they want to do, sing loud, sing whatever they want to sing, talk about whatever they want to talk about and had these amazing talents and songs. That's what inspired me because I was like, wow, they were bullied. They were basically shit on their whole lives and I was too, so I could connect to that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's what I want to be like. I want to be someone that the outcast, the underdog sees me and is like, wow, I can do that too. I can be something. I can be myself. Right. And that's huge. That's like a bigger, that's bigger than music. You're actually that voice for that, that new kid that's in, that's sitting by herself or himself and is probably listening to to music in the morning, you're probably going to be that voice that they listen to because they can relate, right? Like, Pink was also a huge inspiration for me. Um, Like, I don't know if you know who that is, but um, she's a pop singer, and she had this song called Raise Your Glass, and, like, I literally used to cry to that song in middle school because I really was that outcast, like, who felt like nothing, and that song made me feel awesome. It made me feel like, you know, like, who I am at home is who I really am, like... Who I am when I'm alone with my friends is who I really am. Like, what everyone says in this school and what everything that's going on in my life right now doesn't define me. Yeah. Do you feel like you put out a more happy image than any other emotion? Like, Yeah, for sure. I don't think that music is to make people sad. You can feel sad on your own time. Yeah. <laughs> are, are, you, are you sad on your own time? or? No, I'm not a sad person at all. I used to be... Um, but no, I'm not at all. Like, it was just because of the situation that I was in that was making me um, feel sad. And when I got alone and I finally got away from that situation, I'm sitting alone and I'm like, wow, man, I don't think I'm the problem. I'm actually pretty happy alone. I think, I think I'm think i good. Yeah. Ever since then, I've been good. Yeah, pretty much that simple. Yeah. Sometimes okay. you're not the bad one. It's everyone around you. Right. You're always made to think that it's you. Well, I mean, I don't know if that's everyone, but I feel like me personally, if there's a problem, I automatically am like, oh, it's me, it's me. I'm doing something wrong. Got to figure it out what Mm. I'm doing wrong. And then sometimes you have to get alone and just realize, like, maybe it's not you. Maybe other people are the problem. Is that the case for most problems or every problem? Or are there exceptions to when you may be the problem? You'll know. You know, uh, I just think that's like for more people who usually always put the blame on themselves like type of people that always say oh my god I'm sorry for everything they do because that's something I would do is like sometimes you have to realize that you're not the problem like sometimes it's everybody around you is making you feel like that and it's not always but I'm saying like sometimes when did you have the realization that you know you you were actually pretty happy and content with yourself your decisions and stuff like that it was literally my first time being alone I was with people all the time. I never had a moment to be alone. When I finally got alone, had time to think, write, write music, be alone, be with myself, I was like, wow, I'm like not depressed at all. I'm like actually really happy and love myself in my life. All right. Was that, would you call that process like a self-love type of process? Would you, would you give people that advice when it comes to like self-love, like just be, just be by yourself if you for a little like- while? Yeah, if you feel like you're in a toxic environment and you feel like you're so upset and you don't know what to do and there and it's all your fault and you're ruining everything, maybe get away for a week, be alone and find out. Do you still feel super sad? Do you feel still feel super like you hate yourself and everything's horrible or do you feel a lot better and a lot happier and like you actually like yourself? If you actually like yourself and you feel a lot better and happy, Maybe it's because everyone you were around 
was literally destroying you. Mm. What's the solution to that? Do you just ignore everyone else or? You just got to cut everyone off. You know, it's just really not, off. not hard to meet new people. You know, there's a million people in the world. You can't be insecure and think, oh, my God, I have to keep these people in my life because I. how am I going to find someone else? How am I going to do that? No, you can't be insecure. You have to be a strong person and say, I love myself enough to not put myself through this. And you have to get away from those people, and you will always, always find new people. And you'll be like, oh, my God, I'm so thankful that I cut all these people out because now I have the best person ever. You know what I mean? I do. I agree with everything you just said. This is you, 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 uh, uh, you, you're the definition of an artist. Cause like, I, I feel like, like, we you know, we've already agreed. Like you have a deceptive look in terms of like, we got to dig a little deeper to find out what you about as a, you know, as a, as a person. But I think that's, I think that's, um, I think that's unique of you, though, um, you know, that people can't know exactly who you are just off face alone. Um, you also mentioned that you want to be a superstar, like you want to be you want to be the one um, and, and be in, 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 a, in a great position. How long do you think you have until you're in that that position and what do you think you have to do? Um, I don't think I particularly need to be signed to get to that point, but if I want to get there in like two years, then it would be helpful. Um, I think it will take a year longer if I do it myself. Um, but that's just because of money reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, but no matter what, I'm just going to get what I'm going to get and not get upset. What are your biggest failures, like, as an artist? <sighs> there's, there's quite a few. Um, so <laughs> you, first, a lot of lessons. Yeah, okay. So my first failure was, um, hmm, let me think here. Working with my ex, uh, letting my ex, pr like, produce all of my stuff. That was dumb. Um, don't work with people you date. Um, another thing. A failure would have to be, um, I really young was uh, thinking about getting signed, like when I first put out my first EP because I had people interested. Mm -hmm. That's stupid. Don't do that when you're first starting out. I mean, I didn't do it, but like just like the process of going through it, it right. was emotional and it's stupid and I shouldn't have done that. And then um, another mistake is like working with someone too much, like, um, not working on your own music and like letting someone be in every single one of your songs. Yeah, that's stupid. I've done that. Um, uh, what else? I've made a lot of mistakes. You know, uh, there's tons of things. Yeah, and 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 every mistake, every mistake, uh, makes you better. Uh, moving forward, do you regret anything? Like, um, do you regret having letting your ex produce your music or? Having yeah. tried to sign with a, you know, with um, a label. I regret not trying to sign because it was a really good experience um, because of the fact that I gained uh, legal knowledge right. and I also gained knowledge on, like, what do record labels truly want? How am I not going to get screwed over? That mm -hmm. was actually a really helpful thing for me to happen. Um, and then as far as... My ex being my producer, um, I do regret it because um, I go to professional studios and show them my EP and, like, people that I've worked with, people like DJ Khaled and people that write music and produce and things like that, and they hear my EP and they're like, wow, you are an amazing songwriter and your voice is great, but those beats are trash. And I'm like, mm. man, shouldn't have been so loyal. But at that time, you know, I didn't really have a lot of people to make beats for me like I do now. Right. So you didn't realize it was it was trash at the time? No, at the time, like, okay, because here's how I am. I'm like, give me a beat. I'll do any beat. <laughs> I can write on anything. Yeah. I, I'm a songwriter. Give me anything. So I was, like, kind of just taking anything I flowed on, anything he would give me, like, his throwaways, basically. So, like, 
now I'm still kind of the same way where I'm like, give me anything, I'll do anything. But I have like a whole multitude of producers that I actually like get to choose from and stuff like that. Okay, so you didn't regret it as of what you regretted it for two reasons. For one, that he was you were in a, in a relationship with him, and you probably shouldn't work with people you are in intimate relationships with. That's like one shouldn't. of them. At all. Huh? Um, and the other is because he was actually not that great. Or the beat he was giving you, the beats he was giving you wasn't that good. Yeah, it's like um, he didn't care about my stuff, you know? Okay. It was kind of like, oh, oh, get away from me. Oh, oh here, here, here. Mm-hmm. Instead of like, you know, my producers now that actually care about my music, care about me, want to see me be successful. I'm their number one. You know, like they're trying, they're trying to blow me. They care about me. They want me to get farther. Right. It's better to work with people that actually care about you and want you to do good rather than work with people who are just trying to like get you away. Like, oh, here, take it. I'm just trying to make money off you or I'm just trying to get this or that from you or just get away from me. Da, da, da. People are trying to brush you off and they don't actually care and they're not actually invested in you. You don't want to work with those people because everything, and this is what I always say, is like, as people don't understand, is like, I'll get a good take. Yeah, it's a good take. But did I have that emotion in that take? Can you hear the emotion in my breath through that take? Right, right. If you can't, then I don't want to use it. So that's just telling you that everything with music is energy Mm -hmm. if you're not putting that energy into my music i don't even want to work with you and i don't care if you're the mixer the master the the recording engineer i don't care who you are if you're not putting that energy in for me and you don't want to see me succeed i don't even want to work with you because the song is not going to turn out good right and i've had it happen before like a lot of those songs are not the best that i can do and you've heard the best i can do my new music that's not even mixed or mastered yet Mm -hmm. but i did all all in a week and that's because everybody on my team cares about me wants to see me do good wants to see me succeed wants to see me do great and they don't particularly want to gain everything out of me they just want to see me do good Mm -hmm. and like That's the difference between the last EP and this EP is, like, everybody cares about me. Sasha is their main priority. Whereas in my last EP, it was people trying to brush me off, trying to be like, uh, uh, get away. We don't care about your music. Oh, you're forcing us. Oh, you're forcing us. Acting like I'm forcing them to do things I'm paying them for. You know what I mean? So it's, like, definitely energy and, like, people caring about you is what is the most important. And it's, like... Even with a manager, you don't have to be famous to be my manager. You don't have to have clout to be my manager. You need to care about me. You need to want me to do good. You need to want me to succeed and actually, like, put good energy towards that for me to trust you. Like, you know what I mean? I don't want anyone who doesn't want the best for me and see that they are going to gain, too, from being helping me. Like, know that I'm not going to leave them out in the dust. Yeah, that's that's the biggest like that's I feel like that's one of the most important moves is to have and and having a team is having people who care about what they're doing, because that's going to show in the future in the worst times when you're going to need, you know, people to, to fall back on and they don't have that same level of care um, for for all kinds of reasons. So who do your team consist of? Like um, who all is in your team and, and what are the different hats? that they wear torch is my manager and then um i would say him is definitely a part of my team he's like my friend he makes music with me and i would say he's definitely a part of the team like as in like pr and everything like that Mm -hmm. and then i would i have a suave who's producer the 10 10 40 and um Oh, yeah, and then of the most important person on my team, music-wise, would be Thrilla, who is my recording engineer, mixing, and mastering, and he is, like, the most talented person I've ever worked with on that front, and he is actually really cares about me and sees a future with me, so it's really important. I think I... What, Thriller? Thriller? thriller yeah, I've heard of Thriller. You see, if we're talking about the same... I have to check because I'm I'm thinking about somebody else. He's uh, a rapper too. Who has he's a rapper as well? Where is he from? Um, Florida. Maybe? That's that's just his that's just his name. Thriller. It's not anything else. 
I have Jeff Hyacin. Okay, <laughs> you gonna give me the government? Uh, <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I know him. I know. Um, I think I'm thinking about trilo- trilogy. I think I'm thinking about trilogy. Oh, the one that does music. He oh, does trilogy? music for, for um, <laughs> trilogy. Uh, yeah, he actually has worked with me before. Yeah, he's actually made beats for me before, but he doesn't anymore. Yeah, he's dope. I hope there's no there was that wasn't for a bad reason. Trilogy's oh, pretty. Oh, he um is just like um likes my ex and he doesn't want to like uh. Oh, okay, he don't want to offend anybody. Yeah, or he doesn't want to offend anyone. Okay, I got you. All right, well. I haven't heard a thriller. I'll check them out though. Um, the new okay, you showcase new music. Okay, so what's going on with that? You got you got new music. Um, is it gonna be a tape or are you just racking up music to start? EP. I'm EP. not waiting for nobody to give mm-hmm. me no deal. I'm putting it out, mm-hmm. doing a music video. I'm not waiting for you. If you want to give me a deal, give me a deal, and I'll see if it's good. But I'm not waiting for anybody. I'm yeah. putting it out. I'm. Doing it all. Okay. Content, more, content. more content, more music videos, more more, more music visuals. music videos for sure. That's what I really want to get on is like doing more music videos and growing the brand, growing like who Sasha Bang is, becoming more of like a musician like professionally. I was held back for a few years, wasn't able to release anything. Mm-hmm um because of my situation now i'm out i'm doing everything putting everything out i don't care everything is coming out okay. so you got a problem with it too bad so <laughs> this, when can we expect to hear some stuff from you coming out huh well it depends on how fast it gets mixed and mastered but definitely within the next two months so they don't get no time. The people who are signing you don't get no time, right? It's just when you you just gonna put it out. Nope. Sure. Whenever they whenever they see it, they see it. If you wanted me, you should you get a week. Okay, they get, get a week. A, there you we get go. Get a week to deliver the deal. All you right. don't give it to me in that one. <laughs> I feel week. like someone's being held hostage here. No, no hostage situations. Yeah. But you know, every I have a life too. I have a career too. I have to move on. So right. I'm not gonna be waiting for anybody and their magic proposals. You've got a good head on your shoulder, and I'm sure you got a good team in your ear. Um, I think you're making all the right decisions. And um, you know, when it comes to deals, I think it's it's good to be to know your value and. Feel like okay, whatever this person is offering me, there's someone out there who sees a, a you know, a bigger value in, in me. And, and is there? Do you have any interest at all in the independent route? Um, okay. So for me, I do have interest, but it depends on how everything goes. You know what I mean? Um, it's all about money. If I can make enough to be doing it independent, of course I'm going to do it independent. Then I can do whatever I want. Right. But if I get the opportunity to get a really good deal, that's going to end up working out for me great. And that's going to give me a bunch of new people on my team, a bunch of new ways to do PR. I'm going to take it. I'm not dumb. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, how much do you think they have to offer you for you to – sign is it just whatever it's like is it you have to see like would you go on what's the minimum uh i don't like want to say right now but i do want to be able to pay it back but i do know my worth i got you and that's what i'll say Mm -hmm. is that i do plan on you know paying back the amount of money i have to pay back so i don't want anything crazy but i know how much i'm worth right so I'll leave it at that. You have a you have a you have a face guard. Um, as far as like I'm seeing, like people either recognize you, think they recognize you, or want to know about you. I know before, like I said, when before the interview, we announced the interview, and there were people interested in knowing who you were. Um, do you feel like uh, have you always gotten that like re- at least recently as as a, as a, as an artist have you do people walk up on you all the time and before I was an artist it was like that for me like I would go to the um, my like Instagram handle used to be pales cocaine I would go to like the fair and people would like run up to me and be like oh my god is that the pales cocaine girl from Instagram and I'd be like what the fuck like, 
what is going yeah. on? I'm like, I'm not even famous. So why are there people coming up to me like this? Yeah. Like, I was literally in high school. So, like, it's always been, like, uh, like that for me. Like, I've always been very, like, recognizable or something like that. I don't mm. know. But um, I feel like now it's mostly because, like, uh, I'm, like, everywhere. I yeah. go everywhere. I do everything. Like, people, are when they need plants, they hit me up because I'm always everywhere doing everything. I don't care. I'm not one of the people who are, like, I'm too good to be here. I'm too good to do this. No, I'll go anywhere because guess what? If someone remembers me or they follow me and they end up liking my music, guess what? That's a win for me. That day mm. was a win for me. That Just one person. That's good enough for me because that person might end up being a big fan and might get me 10 more. 20 more fans you never know so for me even like something like this is like every time I get an opportunity I don't care whose podcast it is or what they don't have to have that much followers I'll go to do anything I'll go to any party I'll go and do anything just to meet people and be around people and like just like be there in the energy and stuff like I'm not bougie I'll go and do anything and I feel like that's why it's because people recognize me from stuff and they're just like that girl is way overdressed to be here or like, you know, yeah. like some other stuff like or something you're like going to be seen. Yeah. And they're just like, what is she doing here? And then like um, eventually they see me online and then they're like, oh, OK, mm. she's actually nice that she came to that. Oh, or something like that. You know what I mean? It's because I don't I'm not bougie. I'll go anywhere. I'll do anything. I know I'm not a celebrity and I'm never going to try to act like I am, you know, because I don't want to be Hollywood. You know, Kodak song. He's like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's like me. Like, I don't want to be Hollywood. I don't want to go to Hollywood and be one of those people. That's not me. I want to stay like a fun. Friendly. That's the people that end up being Hollywood. I don't not know. in personality, but you know, people are attracted to people like you. You know. I want to, like, be a part of the community. I don't want to be someone who feels like they're better than everybody else. I want to be somebody who is, like, hugging everybody and, like, oh, my God, I love you so much. We strive to motivate, inspire young minds so they don't go to waste. We call ourselves city, but we global. And everybody that has a voice is allowed to be vocal.